Hi, in this video we're going to look at normal distributions and the empirical rule. And it's important to note that the empirical rule is only for normal distributions. So what is a normal distribution? Some of you may know this better as a bell-shaped curve. And what does the empirical rule say? The empirical rule says for a bell-shaped curve, 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So in the picture I've drawn here, if this is the mean right here in the middle, and that's where the mean should be, remember the bell-shaped curve, the normal distribution, is symmetric with the mean, the measure of center, being right in the middle. Then one standard deviation to the right of that would be right here. One standard deviation to the left of that right would be right here. And if you look at this picture, what we're saying is this area right here, this is 68% of the area, approximately. Now, what is 68% of the area? That's 68% probability that the data is within that range. Now, if we take this a step further, the empirical rule also says that approximately 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. 95, so let's see, here's the mean plus two standard deviations, mean minus two standard deviations. So we're saying if we look at this region here, much larger region, then that's gonna be 95% of the data. And finally, the third part of the empirical rule says 99.7 percent of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So where would that be? Again, that would be down here, mu minus three sigma, mu plus three sigma. This is 99.7 in this big region out here. All right, so these numbers, 68. I remember 68, that's the temperature that they recommend you, they set, that you set your thermostat at. I know many people like it higher, but 68 is the temperature that I think PG&E recommends um, for saving energy uh, in the winter. 95 is a nice easy number to remember, and 99.7, uh, when I was younger, that was my favorite radio station, 99.7 FM KFRC. Um, I don't know if that helps you. I don't know if you have a favorite radio station that's different than mine, but these are three numbers you will want to remember. Now, in terms of this picture, there's a couple of other things I want to look at. One of them is called an inflection point. And an inflection point is where a graph changes between being concave down and concave up. So in this case, that is an inflection point right there. Where it was concave down, that's where it looks like an upside down cup. Where it's concave up, that's where it, where it looks like part of a right side up cup. So in this graph, here are the inflection points. It's concave down in the middle, it's concave up on the left side and the right side. And those inflection points, you'll see, they happen right where we're one standard deviation to the left of the mean, and right where we're one standard deviation to the right of the mean. So those inflection points happen to occur at one standard deviation left and right of the mean. So that's a nice thing that lines up with what we've learned from the empirical rule. That is to say 68% of the data is located between the inflection points in the graph. Other things we want to talk about as long as we're here with the normal distribution. Um, again, with the symmetry, you can further subdivide this from the empirical rule so that if I know there's 68% in the middle part, then there's got to be 34% here and 34% here. And you can play that same game as you work your way further out here. You can look at the little pieces in each part of the graph. Also, statisticians have gone ahead and defined for us what it means for a data value to be unusual, and they say that it has a less than 5% chance of occurring. And you'll notice less than 5%, that would be not within two standard deviations. So if it's outside of this region here, that's when we are talking about unusual. 
And this is similar again to the definition for um, outlier that's given using median and quartiles and interquartile range and fences. These are essentially our fences when we're talking about mean and standard deviation. All right, that's it for a quick overview of normal distributions. Um, Z-scores will be the next topic that you need to look at in further understanding normal distributions.